Yeah, time to talk some cricket now. Cricket, lovely cricket. England and Australia are locked in another intense battle following two days of the second Ashes Test being played at Lords. England ended the day on 278 for four, still 138 runs behind Australia's first innings, 416. Ben Duckett has so far top scored for the English with 98, falling two short of a third Test 100. Harry Brook and captain Ben Stokes will resume batting on day three on 45 and 17 respectively. So far for the Aussies, Mitchell Stark, Josh Hazelwood, Cameron Green and spinner Nathan Lan each have one wicket. Earlier in the day, Steve Smith registered test ton number 32, scoring 110 to lead the Aussies to their 400 plus total. Seamers Josh Tong and Ollie Robinson both got three wickets. Now Fazir Mohammed, just a couple of days after ranting about the dark days of West Indies cricket, has uh, maybe a more pleasurable uh, discussion here. I'm not sure because he doesn't like the Australians and the English either. But Faz, <laughs> your thoughts on, on where this test match is? Tight, isn't it? Uh, yeah, indeed. I suppose I should be described as the ult ultimate pessimist or maybe uh, anger personified. But yeah, it's, it's, it's really nice. It's, it's, it's good to see the, the, the way this match is unfolding. And, and of course, the, the discussion is going to continue about England's style, this ultra-aggressive style. But uh, for what has happened so far, it really sets up the next three days of this test match. Yeah, who has the upper hand after two days? I think it's pretty even right now because Ben Stokes is there and, and, and uh, of course you, you've got a pair at the crease right now who are, who are very, very capable of uh, pushing closer to that Australian first innings total. I think uh, England did well in the morning session. They, they bowled with a lot more purpose, a lot more consistency than what we saw on day one when uh, Australia really ran away with things even though they lost two wickets late on, on day one uh, to, to Joe Root's part-time off spin. Uh, so, so, so really at, at the stage, uh, I think it's, it's, it's really finely balanced and as per usual, when we talk about Test Cricket we often look forward to the first session of the next day to give us some indicators as to how it's going to go. Yeah, a few controversial moments in this Test Series so far. Remember the Caribbean Cameron Green catch at, at Gully in the first Test. There was a similar incident today with a, a Steve Smith catch. Oh, what did you make of what happened today? And, and the, the thing is with that, Lance, you're never going to have a situation where these closer things look clean because the, the technology is such that it always looks as if the ball has gone onto, onto the ground. But even when a, a fielder has the fingers under the ball. But for those who would have played the game, and I certainly would only have played at a club level, so I, I, I have never reached anywhere near the highest level, but it's still talking about taking a catch. You can tell instinctively when a catch has been taken cleanly. And looking at it at the first time, I felt the catch was taken cleanly. Again, when you look at, you, oh, look at the replays, remember, replays are not 3D. So they don't give you the, the full depth and the full scope of the way things are, uh, are done. And, and again, there'll also be the added dimension of whether the Aussies are fair, whether they try to get away with things. And many people will recall the Steve Waugh catch uh, when he got Brian Lara in 1995 in Barbados. That's how far back uh, people will go when they talk about the Aussies and whether they are fair or unfair and so on. But my initial reaction was that it was a clean catch. Yeah, and as is the case with the Cameron Green effort, um, yes, your fingers can be under the ball but if the ball is touching the grass that that is a problem and that is the gray area with both today and the Cameron Green first test incident absolutely and and that's why whenever you go to those replays yes it it, it, it leaves that situation where as you look at it closer and closer and closer it looks more and more not out than out <laughs> or the, the instinctive yes. reaction when you yes. see it live yes. is that it's out. Yes. Um, so, 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 so that's where the difficulty arises. And I, I, I can't see any way out of that situation. And, 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 and of course, it comes down to the, the TV umpire to make a determination. Yeah. And the fact is that a lot of times in those um, marginal um, catches, the fingers are wide apart. If you have your fin fingers close together and all fingers are under the ball, you can, you know, assume quite um, confidently that the ball hasn't touched grass. But if your fingers are like this, which in many cases, that's, that's how you take some of those sharp catches, there's a lot of gap between your finger and where the ball is. And um, I, I guess it's, it's something that we won't get around because controversy is a part of sport. And as you just mentioned correctly, Faz, um, when you keep showing the replays over and over and over, 
it starts to distort <laughs> and you're not even sure what you're, you're seeing. But again, we had said after the first test that this series is still wide open because although the Aussies won the first test marginally, a lot of cricket still left to be played because it's a five-test series. And um, I think you're right, Faz, the first session on the third morning will probably uh, tell us a lot about where this test match is going. Indeed, and and again, you, you're having the discussion taking place right now whether it was brainless cricket uh, by the Englishmen uh, towards the end of the day, the all be falling to the hook shot. And again, if you're going to buy into this ultra attacking style, you also have to buy in to, to that risk reward sort of situation. Uh, and and again, you can't have it both ways. I think what is happening is because it's the Ashes, the English, and especially the English media and former players who are commentators and so on, uh, in 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 a sense of paranoia over everything about the Ashes. So therefore, they're joyous when it works well, like Joe Root doing the reverse scoop with the first ball, first over of the third day of the first test and getting sixes and they're all overjoyed about it. The greatest session of test cricket ever played with over 100 runs in just an hour. But when it doesn't work out, like three falling to the hook shot and on the, towards the end of day, day two in, in this test match, it's brainless, it's reckless, it's irresponsible. The fact is you can't have it both ways. It's either you want to play door, defensive, turgid, attritional cricket and, and fight your way through because it's the ashes and everything matters, or you take the good with the bad. You take the fact that you play this ultra-aggressive style and there will be moments when it looks brainless because that is the way you're playing the game. And the fact that you've won 11 out of 12 test matches is because you've been playing it that way. Mm. All right, fans, we're going to leave it there. A lot still to play for in this test match and the test series uh, for sure. And, of course, we keep a close eye as well as to what's happening in Zim Zimbabwe and the ICC World Cup qualifiers. But we're going to talk a lot between now and the next couple of weeks, Paz. Thanks for joining us. Thank you. Yeah, break time now. We come back with um, the zone updates. And then at the track after that,